it's not every day you get to have an Amia in the studio with you. And I'm happy to announce that we now have present in the studio His Royal Highness Abbas Tafida. He is the Emir of Muri. And of course, he was at the 100 for 100 PPP event yesterday. And he will be giving us more information on providing practical solutions to socioeconomic challenges for growth. You're welcome, Your Highness, to the Thank studio. you, madam. Oh, my daughter. Okay, thank you so much, thank sir. <laughs> yes, sir. You're a beneficiary of the 100 for 100 PPP. Yes, my company. Yes, sir. Okay. So, um, what did you do to get to be among the first people? What did your company do? Well, first of all, uh, I thank you for the interview. My company is an innovator in the livestock and overall agricultural industry. As an EMEA, I am at the forefront of the local clashes and all problems of drives and this. And from there, I realized somebody like me must take the initiative to create a solution for the country. And the initiative is, I identified the issues before the livestock industry in the country. The first issue, of course, is the ignorance of my brother Flannis. You need knowledge in order to benefit from knowledge. And with the high level of illiteracy, with the high level of ignorance, accessibility to modern developments is limited. So I decided the fastest way to teach is to set an example. And therefore, I, as an emir, I decided to also become a businessman in the agricultural industry in order to do what is supposed to be done today so that my remaining Fulani brothers will learn as fast as possible. Okay. And second, to create the credibility in me and in the leadership of the Fulani, so that when we speak, the others will listen. Okay. The major issues in the livestock industry today, as I started, is the ignorance of the Fulani who control almost 70%, if not 80% of the meat and sheep uh, in, uh, production. Second is the malutilization of land. We must utilize land efficiently. And to utilize land efficiently, the first step is to increase it. And the fastest way to increase land, you don't create it, is to introduce irrigation. So I set up to become an irrigation expert so that I can double the land available. Second is the feed fodder. So I went to research both in Nigeria and outside and developed and started implementing the best fodder for our country. And they are Supernapia, which we got from India and Thailand, Paradoa, which we got from Brazil, Burgu, which is our local uh, grass that has very high protein. And second, of course, uh, pasture must go with irrigation it must also go with agriculture overall because you need to do whatever you do in planting maize in planting grass. And therefore, I developed also a complete agricultural team. And with this complete agricultural team now, I am confidently in the position to set up the best example for all Nigerians, not just my tribe. One of the problems I did not mention in the agriculture is the fact that the rest of the tribes simply think that it's only Fulani that rear cattle. Simply because what the Fulanis are doing that is wrong, most know that they cannot do it. They cannot carry cows and start moving and sleeping in the bush. So I also introduced packaging silage, delivering silage to cattle farms so that you can, a, a beautiful young lady can run a small uh, livestock unit, receive her grass, feed the grass in a respectable environment, it will not affect her dress, it will not affect her beauty. She will still be a respectable standard lady and she will still be a cattle rearer. Is it working? If it is not working, I wouldn't have been winning prizes. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but now you are in interview, go ahead. <laughs> yes, sir. So, um, how do you see this affecting or imparting the whole social uh, space of Nigeria economically now? In First terms of all, of, yes. I will start by saying the only thing that was missing, this creative, brilliant central bank governor has initiated it. Which is? Which is driving finance to people with brain. 
<laughs> so that we combine the finance and the brain and create results. Of course, that's not the first time the first central bank supported me. Five, uh, eight, 12 years ago, they gave me one billion, which I paid correctly and on time from the products of the DC. So now it is neither a surprise nor that much of a luck, in my own case at least, because I am sure of what I am up to, I am sure of what I am doing, and I know the country needs it. But you, you, you've just uh, touched something now that shows that you already have a very, very fantastic credit line with you because you repaid what they gave you. Of so course, many yes. Years I back. don't just have fantastic credit line. <laughs> I have fantastic continuous income from a productive system, and that's what every businessman is supposed to aim and achieve. Okay, so yesterday you also made a mention of businesses expanding through this, which you are doing. For instance, you gave an example yesterday that in the middle belts you would want to see slaughterhouses so that we don't have to transport Right. The animals. program again, madam, I would divide it into two. Okay. First of all, business expanding. The first area is when we complete the diagnostic lab and the embryo transfer lab, we will be able to produce breeding animals that anybody can buy and start breeding and start producing milk. As of today, you want to start producing